Welcome to Barbershop Podcast, episode number 204 of Barbershop Podcast, coming to you live from Boxo Studio in the wonderful, wonderful city of Hamilton, Ontario. And we are in the shadow of the great Hamilton Mountain. Barbershop Podcast, bringing you each and every week the very best in live, original music and musicians, real people, real stories, a crucial part of who we are and why we are. This is a shared experience. This is a social experiment. This is bringing the music to the masses. We are worldwide in high definition and high fidelity and have been for 204 consecutive weeks. But we want to get higher. We want to get higher. Definition. Higher definition and the definition of higher definition. Do you like my segue? It was so sweet. It was sweet. <laughs> I'm scared of losing my job. My word smithery is in <laughs> is in jeopardy. Don't worry. Yeah. In- <laughs> I, I pull out one every 204 ish episodes. <laughs> we need new cameras. We have been using a special type of Logitech webcam, which has serv- served us well. Sir, it is only However. a certain kind, and we went through so many webcams, and we found a certain kind, and then have to get them reconditioned, and they're thirty or forty dollars, as opposed to the original seventy bucks. Yeah, and they last for a certain amount of time, and they never match up or color balance. And although we're high definition, we're probably on the south side of seven twenty. Yeah, you know. But there's all, all this going on. I don't know if I can get a point going other way. Yeah. Well, the, the, the point is we can do better. Than yeah. That. We can do better than that. The show is sounding great. The Mighty Apollo 16, great Soundcraft K2, and uh, uh, the setup that uh, you boys uh, pour labor of love into, uh, and the uh, mixing software that we got from a GoFundMe campaign from two and a half years ago. We went from the X Split, which was the very best of the free. Yes. And when you make a step from the best of the free to something uh, decent, a company out of Australia uh, yeah. produces the software we use to uh, uh, with the cameras and to edit the show. And it uh, absolutely made a huge difference. And we've done as much as we can for the last uh, two and a half years. So we're firing up the GoFundMe campaign. You're going to be seeing it yes. in the next couple of weeks. We won't run it forever, but we need some dough. We're going to get uh, some cameras. Yeah, and it's yeah we've uh, both it's it's a quality thing and a uh, a quality of life thing. It's a, sa- it's a safety thing. <laughs> it's a safety. I fear for my safety because <laughs> the amount of stress of making it's, it. Yeah, it's just we people we've, can't we've, believe we actually do this with webcams we because it looks and, better yeah. than it than it is. But and, and it is it is a, a disservice to what we're putting out too, right? It's, it is. Before it was just kind of a we can do it because of whatever, but now I mean we've gotten so far with the audio that. We might as well put a, a little bit of effort into some yeah. video upgrades. Yeah, and we've got a lot of fans out there and people who yeah. said, absolutely, you should do that, and I'm in. So. And we've put together a pretty decent budget for what we want to do, but yeah. it's just it's more than you and I are able to contribute. Yeah, yeah. we put enough of our uh, – the bank won't even talk to me anymore. No. But anyway, you can get stuff. You can get CDs out of Box of Studio. You can get T-shirts, uh, you know, from uh, Barbershop Podcast, produced by our great friends over at Urban Hamilton Artist, HamiltonArtist.ca. Uh, you know what else we're gonna do? What else we're gonna we have gonna a buy Gary a mic option. Buy Gary, and a it'll mic. just be whatever shitty mic we have, but it'll be a ransom. We're gonna have a ransom for Gary to have a mic. Right. If enough people buy the package, we'll give Gary a mic. All right. All right. But I want all of his questions in advance. Oh, absolutely. See, absolutely. That's, uh, They'll be vetted through the committee. Vetted through the committee. Thank you. Anyways, um, anyways enough about us. Enough about us. We're going to get back to what we do, and we do unfailingly and unflinchingly. There's been a few flinches, but 
Every week we bring you some great music and some great people, some great stories. This week is uh, no different. Uh, returning to the show, someone who uh, I, I greatly admire, and uh, the feeling is mutual. I know because he ran into me, you know, at an art party early on, and. Uh, told me he was a great fan of podcasts in general he liked what we were doing and he wished us well and uh really enjoyed his first visit to the uh show his life has had uh some twists and some turns uh, as all our lives do his uh being uh, uh particularly twisty and he's uh, an artist and he's written a record and it's about to be released and he's brought himself and he's brought his music into the studio tonight and i'm uh, really thrilled and honored to have you and famous famous thanks so much for coming in how are you uh how how's like life treating you, are you still uh, working the, the line you no I, i've uh given up <laughs> given up the auto industry for, for now yeah, yeah. The auto industry. now uh, for those of you who are uninitiated uh, famous famous uh, uh it's a great uh great stage name and uh a famous uh famous famous uh, reference to guitar a special kind of a uh, 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 guitar that had a, a very devout following mm -hmm. and a very kind of specific sound. Um, how do you tie in um, what you do, what you sound like, with, uh, what you play, and how you play it? Like if you do an elevator tap where you've got 25 seconds to explain to the lady when she asks you what you do, you're about famous friends for the unfortunately uninitiated. <laughs> I just, uh, I tell the truth. I tell the truth with uh, minimal, uh, minimal uh, whistles, and uh, I just was always with uh, your kitchen table guitar guy, just yeah. laying it out there, and uh, that got me uh, at an early age. Put the put it into me, and I've always been. It's always uh, make me made me want to tear my chest cavity open uh, when I hear somebody that's just uh, wailing, yeah, wailing uh, the truth, you know, the, the human truth. And there's a, there's a beautiful economy of words that's often used too. Yes. Uh, the similes and the references. Oh, the wordsmithery, uh, like you say, is. Yeah. Uh, I like a I like a song. I like to write a song that has uh, you know it has an arc. It has some resolution. It has. It's not just. Uh, a couple of uh, you know nice sounding, uh, nice sounding words slapped together, and then you get left with an empty feeling when you're done uh, drinking your diet Pepsi of a song. Right. I like to uh, when I write, I like to write a story. I like to write something that's truly happened, uh, you know, to me or near me, and I like to. Uh, well, it's it's cathartic for me. I like to get it out, and I like to get a tangible human vibration. Yeah. We're talking about vibrations. Absolutely. I vibrate at a certain frequency, and and that's what I do. And if people pick up on that frequency and uh, can feel the, some of their own vibrations through my, you know, through my art, then that's uh, that's great. Now, um, are you exclusively write the, the tune and then write the music, or write the music then write the tune, or so it's a bit of both? It's uh, it's sometimes it's it's uh, just a phrase, two words together. Sometimes it's a title. Sometimes it's a feeling musically. There's really no uh, kind of box that it fits into. It just seems to be like whatever. It's like tuning in now the old radio stations, you know. Some nights, some nights you got the station from Cleveland and some nights you didn't. And it came in and out. And then when it did come in, it, you better jump on it and yeah, and grab it while it's, uh, while it's, while it's tuned in. And, uh, and, and I think that there is a ever-increasing audience for that people want truth in 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 music and they want truth in in many things and so. and they don't have to uh that they're not reliant on any am signal bouncing off the atmosphere anymore no it's a little bit of homework you can find the truth be it with politics or you be it with music mm -hmm. uh, and reaching out and sharing and we're going to touch on the record that you've brought in, uh, Learn to Live, and I imagine it probably talks about, you know, you learning to live, learning to live again. Um, you, you suffered a great loss and uh, of, of losing a child. Yes, and did. people said and have said that, uh, you know, there's 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 no no sadness greater. And uh, it's it's it, it's a devastating thing to to get through. Um, is it even a, are you even able to, to to quantify 
any profound differences of how your life has changed, uh, any realizations of, of what was important, or is it just a day-to-day -day going forward? Oh, everything's changed. It's uh, it's on uh, it's changed at a, 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 a an atomic level. It's changed uh, your, the atoms of my cells vibrate differently. The the uh, it's like uh, it's like being on a high ledge, and you know when you look over a high ledge or a high balcony, you can get a feeling for. Yeah. You stick your head over, and you can get that feeling, like you know, like in your stomach, of what it would be like to step off the ledge. But when you actually step off the ledge, there's no stepping back on the ledge, and everything's different. Yeah. So it's. Uh, it's profound. It's um, you know, metaphors don't do it justice. It's like being uh, shown what's behind the curtain, almost. You know, uh, it's a day-to-day -day weather system. It just uh, it just comes in and takes you over, and you know, you can't push uh, you can't push a hurricane. You can't. You just got to let it flow, and then hopefully you get a little touch of sunshine and. Uh, a little bit of inspiration and, uh, you know, and that's the day. That's the day. That's the day. And uh, it, and surrounded, uh, you know, my, an another friend of mine lost his daughter uh, just a very short while ago. And and he's almost word for word what you're saying. Um, and uh, there's this, you know, the support groups and, and, and talking to people in the same situation, which is what artists and songwriters have done for a long time, the pain to share the pain, be it something as, you know, seemingly trivial as a as a as a teenage broken heart, which to a teenager isn't isn't trivial in the wow. least, right? Absolutely. Um, and it's taking the personal and making it universal. It's taking uh, something that is so uh, devastating to me and sharing it, and knowing that that's going to touch us very uh, profoundly with someone who doesn't have those abilities to to verbalize or mm -hmm. to even uh, wrap it into why do I feel this and is it safe, Express is it okay it. to feel this way? Yeah. What was the writing process? Was it just a matter of you just letting it pour out? Was there a period where you didn't even want to think about doing this? Did you know you were going to do this right off I the bat? I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, I hadn't been writing for quite some time and, uh, and then uh, it was just like once the first kind of inspiration the first kind of you know if it, if it feels like it's something's cooking and then as soon as uh as soon as i get something tangible and that was always my writing process before it seems to open everything up it just seems to yeah and then when i'm in that when i'm vibrating at that frequency <clears throat> excuse me there's a lot there's a lot of ways to go with uh yeah. you know it's big it's big there's a lot of things to take, and so I've been uh, I've been very, you know, everything else in, in my life has been uh, has suffered greatly, but uh, my uh, my muscle memory, my artist's muscle memory, has taken Continue. me and allowed me to at least have that outlet, you know. Yeah. So I've uh, I've poured myself into it. I'm, I'm so happy you have. I, I went through a seven-year period where I couldn't play. I couldn't play Mary Had a Little Lamb without crying. It had nothing to do with the song I wanted to write about what I was going through, but it was just such a conduit to mm -hmm. me feeling something, and I almost felt like, oh, my God, don't tell me that this one thing that is supposed to be uh, a tool to be able to heal, I can't. I can't go there. Did you go through a period where you couldn't play or you couldn't well, write? Well, it took me, yeah. uh, you know, it took me many, many times to uh, get through these songs without, uh, you know, without Losing crying yeah, or, for sure. but, yeah, like, uh, and I still, uh, <clears throat> I still cry every day, you yeah. know, that's, uh, I accept that, it's part of it. It is important to let the sadness, uh, you know, um, Louis C.K. said it on, on what show, one of the talk shows he was on, and... Uh, so, you know, letting that sadness come and then having the the gratitude that kind of follows too often that we're so scared or so wanting to avert the sadness that that's when we, you know, hit the computer or hit the bottle or do yeah, something. I've heard but, that. I've heard that. Uh, uh, I've heard that bit and I, I can I can definitely uh, relate to that. And 
I think it's, um, you know, at times uh, the most alive we are is when we're suffering. Uh, it sounds perverse, but it's mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty true. You know, like your your more uh, your your hairs and your cells and your things more things are activated when you're truly suffering yeah. than uh, when you're just bouncing around and everything's uh, going your way. You think yeah. you're fully alive, but uh, yeah, that's uh, not that's not how it works. It's true. All right, we're going to start with a live song, as we tend to do here. Uh, what's the first one you're going to play for us? I'm going to play um, What is a Man? And uh, this, uh, these lyrics were, uh, were taken from a poem that my son had written. Um, he, he did a bit of writing himself, and he left some stuff behind in some journals. And, uh, and I just, uh, you know, I had the, the poem uh, in a frame beside my bed for a while, and I... Uh, and I just started kind of playing with the words, and uh, I had to rearrange them a bit, but uh, it fit. It's wonderful that it fit. It's wonderful that a document can be made, music, and it's chiseled in stone, and it's forever. And we're going to hear it right here, right now, on barbershoppodcast.com. Some noise and make a mess when he's young. What is a man? Who is he grows? Realizes there's some things he needs to know. What is a man? Well, it's a start. He puts his pride aside and opens up his heart. can say fantastic famous famous here at barbershop podcast what is a man off of a brand new cd if you're lucky enough Thanks to get so. yourself a uh, really great tune thank you really great tune and uh, world class every week there's someone in here who is as good as anyone anywhere and it's right out of hamilton or surrounding areas uh, it's that good it needs your support Go out, support live music, buy local music. Go into uh, anywhere that sells CDs and ask if they where their local section is, where their independent music section is. And if they don't have one, look at them like they have two heads. Like just go, you're, you're kidding me. 
you're you're missing out on a lot of business, buddy. And then leave, you know, leave that in their head. And same thing. Yeah. And if you have a place that you like to go to that makes a great sandwich and they have a little place, you say, you know, Ed, you should put music in here. You should get someone playing some music. Put that be in their bonnet. Be an ambassador, someone who believes in something. And music does uh, everything to give you that confidence to believe in it and Mm -hmm. support it. Do it. Barbershop Podcast does. Want to support people who support us and one of them. Of course, is our great friends at Hamilton Artists. Uh, They are uh, the people who print anything on anything. If you've got something big, if you've got something small, uh, our fantastic new Barbershop Podcast t-shirts are are a product of uh, Hamilton Artists. They do uh, keychains, golf tees. They do vinyl wraps of buildings and doors. They do vinyl or uh, they do uh, etching like with lasers in stone and wood. You can like put your own face on the back of your acoustic guitar if you want to. Backdrops for your band, like hats, mugs, uh, hoodies. You got a message, you got a name to get out there. They're the people to get a hold of. HamiltonArtist.ca. Give them a click. Tell them Kev sent ya. All right. Famous, famous. In the house. We are talking music. Uh, this particular um, labor of love. You know, I guess it really is a combination of, you know, as in most projects, you kind of... N- know it when it's done were you able to walk away and go that's that's it that's exactly what i wanted or do you still obsess over little no, things no. i uh i went in uh with uh paul and uh, i went to uh mm leblanc's uh, studio and i was ready i i did uh basically i recorded the whole record uh in like a three hours just live off the floor and then i went in and uh, mitch uh, leblanc brought me back in to uh overdo some uh, dub some vocals but uh, I, I was ready to go but yeah. I'd, I'd played and played these songs hundreds of times before I even left the house with them you know so yeah, yeah. so I guess that was important that that came through and I guess it was self-evident mm-hmm. all right we're gonna just get right to it we're gonna play the first one on my mind anything special you want to tell us about that one uh, that's another one that just uh, you know I was sitting I was sitting in, uh, strangely enough, when I get the sun, not direct sun, but when I get the sun kind of coming through trees or coming through doors or coming through odd places, and you know how it kind of just just catches the side of your eye? Mm-hmm. Well, I was, uh, I was sitting down in the basement at the bottom of the stairs, and I noticed that the sun was coming through the side window and bent and... It was just aiming in this spot, and I took a chair, and I took my guitar, and I sat at the bottom of the stairs, and I just started playing it. And uh, as fast as I could play it, I wrote all the lyrics down, and probably about as long as the song is, is is exactly how it ended up and how long it took me to write it. These things really do happen. I mean, this is otherworldly. This is crazy. This is great. This is Famous Famous on BarbershopPodcast.com. Time on my mind cause I know 
CD, Famous Framus. Uh, tell us about the CD release and where it is, when it is, what people can look forward to. We're doing the CD release uh, <coughs> at our own, our old uh, living room, Rebels Rock. We love it. Love it. Kate. Kate, Troy. she's got herself a, a true Irish pub right in the heart yeah, of Hamilton. That's, um, that's been my home for, uh, you know, pretty much since I started since I started playing out, a funny thing, uh, when I first, it was one of the, I think it was the first place I went when I, I did a demo CD a long time ago. And I went in and talked to Kate in the afternoon, <clears throat> and I said, you know, I'm Famous Famous, and I'd like to play, uh, I'd like to play in the pub, you know, and she said, well, I'm very particular about my music. I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll leave you this, and, you know, you just let me know. I thought the info was on the, yeah. was on the CD, and uh, so I could, she went in the kitchen, I could hear her putting it on. So I was out the door and shh, I got in my car and I got about a block and a half up the road and she called me. And she said, I want you here one Saturday a month. You get two pints, you get something to eat. Yeah. That fast, just blew my mind. I yeah. didn't even get out of downtown and she called me. I think she lived it. She didn't even finish listening to the first song. Great. So God bless her. And you do need that the wind in your sails you know and the, the sun on your face especially in, uh, in in the moments I've had a few of them in my life right where it's just like yes that vote of confidence is yeah. going to pay dividends for all of us <laughs> down the road there's, time, there's enough rejection to go around but there's yeah. a nice little uh, and then and Rebels Rock now is like uh, like I've really lost uh, the desire to do the, sh the handshaking and the marketing and the getting out like you know I was kind of out of the scene for a couple of years and things change in a couple of years right you can't just pick up the phone and say phone. You know, what, what, what Saturdays <laughs> have I got you know I'll take this Saturday this Saturday yeah. here there there yeah. and I don't really uh, you know I'm not the same person I'm not the I don't have the desire to go out and bang on doors and try and convince people who or what I am Yeah. so uh, you know if I can get a you know, a show or two at Rebels Rock, and uh, Lou uh, will, uh, you know, always throw something my way. That's good enough for me for now. Like, I don't have any uh, aspirations of knocking the world down right now, you know? Yeah, I totally get that. At my age, I'm the same way. You want to play out because there is a uh, great feeling. You need to play out. Playing yeah. out makes us feel good. And people Absolutely. connecting and, and uh, come up and say thank you. Enjoyed that. That's really important, too. Uh, but independent music and making a document something that lasts forever, something that's going to outlive you and I. Mm -hmm. um, and put it in the library, the Hamilton Library. Every CD I put in there, it's really great because you go in and you see there's been a couple hundred people who... Yeah, who I did do that with my, uh, my stuff. I did, uh, I did that before. Yeah, people have said that to me that they, they took me out you, of the library. You're their entertainment. Yes. It's cool. All right. You're going to play another one live for us. What do you got for us next? I'm going to play uh, Junior Strip. All right. Anything, yeah. anything about that you'd like us to know? Uh, well, this is one of the first songs I wrote on uh, when I started this uh, journey, and uh, it's kind of a song about uh, you know I had my trip and uh, my son had his trip. Uh, tragically, his trip uh, wasn't you know nearly uh, long enough, or it uh, was shortened. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, he had his trip, and. Uh, and that's uh, thematically, uh, you know, 
And that's uh, thematically what the song that's, is kind of about. Laid out. His All trip right. as opposed to mine. Gotcha. I'm sure you're going to flesh it out for us beautifully. And you're going to hear it right here, right now on barbershoppodcast.com. Payday loans and tattoo parlors Dot the landscape, paint the corners Hop on to my town, it seems Laden down, broken dreams The junior says he's leaving town He's tired of all the running around Putting down the shame and pain Going where they make the rain Somewhere there's a big old sky Big enough for you and I To say the things we should have said Heart to heart, head to head So long for now A song, a smile So long for now A song, a smile Crack that throttle, take a grip We're going on a one-way trip To the dark side of the sun Baby boy, you were born to run And when you reach the speed of light Don't forget to say goodnight For me it's awful as it seems At least I'll see you in my dream I never occupied your brain And I know I never Pain. Long ago I had my own That's a walk, you walk alone So long for now A song, a smile So long for now A song, a smile when you were just a little guy, I'd pick you up and hold you high. Together we would find the moon. You'd get there, boy, but way too soon. And on your trip away from home, you picked yourself the biggest stone. Led you out into the cold, laid you down a heavy load. Now you put it down so you could fly I feel you boy, but I still cry For a melancholy me Not for you boy, now you're free So long For now A song A smile So long For now A song A smile Pity loans and tattoo parlors Dot the landscape, paint the corners What happened to my town, it seems Laden down with broken dreams Fantastic original music from Famous Framus. Check him out. The link to uh, the CD release. Uh, you got a uh, website. Where's the best people way to people get a hold of you? Uh, there's a website. There's a face. Paul does a Facebook thing. Uh, I'm on uh, Twitter. You will find if any yeah, effort is is, yeah. is exerted, they will we're, find we're you. Combing the, we're we're yeah. just combing the town. <laughs> we something say, will shake out. We say the same thing about Barbershop Podcast. Barbershop Podcast. Three words. Barber Shop Podcast, and uh, you'll find the other episode, and you get to see part one of the famous, famous That's story, right. the second one coming in here. The songs are beautiful, mature. Uh, your voice is great. Thanks, uh, your playing is is, is sharp. Um, I hope you people at home uh, appreciate what you got here. That's a real sweetie humdinger of a show. All right. Speaking of humdingers, we got a great lady, Heather, over at Taxes Done Right, and she does our taxes right. She does my taxes right. She does my books here, you know, at the studio to make sure that we don't owe any thugs money. And by thugs, I mean the government. <laughs> uh, to make sure that it is all hunky dory and things are done right. If you get your taxes done and you're, uh, you know, Tell them they even know us or that you learned about uh, her through Barbershop Podcast. You'll get a discount. I don't know. I think it's 5 10 something percent or dollars. I'm sure whatever is greater or more. She cuts me slack when I don't get her ad exactly right because she knows that there are people going, you know what? I need to get that stuff done. I'm so glad that 
that was mentioned right here, right now. So check them out. Taxes done right. Good people. Uh, friends of the show. Barbershop Podcast. Famous Framus is in the house. He's playing and we are playing music from his new CD, Learn to Live, Testament of Life, the trials and tribulations, the ups and the downs, the crushing defeats and the small victories. Um, it's wonderful that music uh, can be a bridge. And so many people from different places, music can kind of connect them. And uh, thank you for writing. Thank you for writing in your, your heart sleeve. You know, it's. I think that's important in a world where people write to think it's great to be cloying and, you know, yeah. and, and it's like, you know, or to be crass. You know, there's one that there's a lot of room in between. Uh, we're going to do a, uh, we're going to do another tune. We're going to do one off the CD, right? Learn to live. Learn to live, yeah. yeah tell us about this one. Uh, well, it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a title, just a uh, track of the CD. That's the message. It's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's um, it's a, uh, it's a manifestation of my hands because it's a bit of a, you know, a banger. Or, you know, I'm a bang on that national, and that's, you know, I find that I can really squeeze and uh, pour myself through that guitar like. Uh, there's something about slide guitar that lets you uh, just plug your you have to bleed, plug your uh, your 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 cerebral cortex right into the jack of the guitar and you can feel it through uh through every fiber so when i really need to uh squeeze something and uh wail that's what i go i go for that guitar so all right you're gonna hear it learn to live right now barbershoppodcast.com <laughs> Podcast.com. It is the title track of the CD from Famous Framus. It's on tonight's show. You can check us out on uh, YouTube. You can check us out on iTunes. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and uh, and all of the other uh, of the social media sites. As the man said, you know, swing a cat, you'll find us <laughs> on the internet there. And if you do like us, then share us 
with your friends. We're just, I think, five shy of 72,000 views for this show. Which, if you know, it's once if it's a something, someone you know farting or something, it's, they get two million hits. But for something of substance like this, I'm quite proud of that. That's a lot of people getting a little taste of mm-hmm. the real thing, and there's nothing better than the real deal. Speaking of which, you're going to do another live tune for us. Yes, sir. What are you going to do? I'm going to do uh, "Daddy's Gone." Uh, through this uh, whole thing, I've uh, I've kind of uh, been considering my my folks. My folks are gone long, you know. They both died uh, pretty young, and uh, you know, you go through your life and you reconsider the people that have been in your life, and you know, at the time you're uh, not as fully formed of a person to uh, appreciate that. appreciate, yeah. and uh, you know, when you've been. You know, getting up near 50 and you've been uh, kicked in the balls a few dozen times and you realize that, you know, they were too and uh, their perspective is uh, valid and uh, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it just made me kind of personally revisit my uh, my relationship in my head, in my heart with my parents, you know, and, uh, and some of it was uh, rocky, but, uh, you know, some of it was funny and I try to capture that with this song. Yeah, what's it called? Daddy's Gone. Well, it's a song about some reckoning here called Daddy's Gone, Famous Famous on barbershoppodcast.com. Well, my daddy left home when I was one. Couldn't stick around, he had to run. Came back home when I was two. He said I couldn't stay away, boy. I really missed you. Yeah, my daddy left home when I was three I couldn't tie him down, he had to be free Came back home when I was four He said I missed you so much, I couldn't take it anymore Ah, right, daddy's gone again Not sure for how long it went He might come back again Daddy's gone again Yeah, my daddy left home when I was five He said I gotta get out or I'll never survive Came back home when I was six He said I've made some mistakes But nothing can't be fixed Now my daddy left home when I was seven He said I gotta find my own little piece of heaven Came back home when I was eight He said I've worked it all out Now everything's great My daddy's gone again Not sure for how long it went He might come back again Daddy's gone again Yeah, my daddy left home when I was nine He said I gotta get out or I'll lose my mind Came back home when I was ten He said I've worked it all out I'll never leave again But my daddy left home when I was eleven He said I needed an ace, but I turned up a seven Came back home when I was twelve He said I haven't been fair I just think of myself My daddy's gone again Not sure for how long it went He might come back again Daddy's gone again Well, I came to realize Something was wrong every time I turned around My daddy was gone Year after year he put us all through hell But he was still my old man And I wished him well But I made up my mind Come the day that I had my own son I'd never run away I'd stay I wouldn't run away And I'd stay But my daddy's gone again Not sure for how long it went He might come back again He might come back again He's not coming back again Daddy's gone again I very much enjoyed that song and every one of the songs you presented this evening on Barbershop Podcast. Thanks, ah, man. You're really, really good. It's tough to get the gigs, as you said, when you're an original artist um, to, to play. And, and the amount of work required and the distance re- that has to be traveled to pursue that is tough, especially, like you said, when you're pushing that side of 50. Um no side of 50 is particularly attractive. Trust me, I've been on both. <laughs> but uh, 
how comfortable are you with the uh, with the digital world? Because it is changing, right? I mean, it's a lot of stuff. You seem strike me as a guy who's always maybe a, a do-it-yourselfer, had no problem kind of tackling projects and trying new things. I've done, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I've done, I did the graphic uh, work on that, and I did that on most of my earlier CDs. I did the graphics on what ended up being production discs, but uh, it's funny you mention that because I, uh, I got connected with uh, someone you may know, Alicia Main, yep. and she has uh, opened the doorway to digitizing you know, my whole back catalog, and that's in the process now of, of all going on a digital platform, and that will be going up on the digital platform as well. Wonderful. Yeah, it uh, was a fortuitous just kind of, uh, I ran into her, and uh, I think she was DJing at the uh, show uh, we played with the Waco Brothers, and. Uh, or chatting, and she it's, said it's uh, it's just uh, that, it's that easy. Yep, that communication is what it's about, and that's one thing. You know, it's like you don't have to know everything; you just have to know someone. Somebody who, who knows, knows, yeah, or at least know somebody who knows. And I brought her. It's funny because I, I hadn't had copies of my stuff for years, and I actually, you know, I had to have copies with the artwork and with, and I brought her my life. You know, my di first yeah. discs up to this. You know, and I had a handful of. I had a handful of life in my hands, like yeah, a lot of tunes. A lot of tunes, man, mm -hmm. and some old tunes that I'd forgotten, and some, you know, it was just a, it made me uh, really think that I've uh, there's there's tangible evidence there's a that, body I, of work uh, there. that I was around <laughs> banging yeah. on uh, yeah. a guitar uh, somewhere somehow. It does. It's creeps so up it creeps. It kind of made me feel. Uh, mm -hmm. It made me feel good, you know. It made me feel like uh, it made me feel uh, accomplished, you know. Oh, right, we're gonna change it up and play two live ones in a row before we go to uh, another recorded one and, and another live one. But you've got some alternate instrumentation. You've always been somebody who's a, a sound shaper and a sound maker. And as mm -hmm. you said, playing the the national the resonator guitar before there were guitar amplifiers. The guitar was a percussion percussion instrument. It was the horns that got to do all the lead and whatnot. And the only way yes. they could come close to amplifying it is to put basically a, a pie plate and a, a spring and a cone in yeah. there. And and it has a very distinctive sound. It, it do you find yourself when you pick it up, it you bites. just play a certain way? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's uh, it's 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 kind of connected into my uh, into my my guttural self, yeah. you know. So and, and playing the slide just as natural. Yeah. Well, you know, I picked it up uh, and I just it just felt like I was really uh, just making tangible emotions that you could feel. Yeah. You know, I was transferring myself to the ether. There you go. Yeah. And matter cannot be created or destroyed, so it's coming out of your, you know, it's being on a piece of brass that's being up against a piece of brass and wood, you know, it's the mm. fuel of someone's brain. You had to eat a sandwich to fuel that yeah, it's brain all, uh, to make that feeling. It's yeah. It's got to wind up somewhere. That's right. All right. What's this one called? This one is called uh, Sweet Relief. All right. Sweet relief. Sweet you want relief. to tell us about it? Uh, well, it's a song about uh, mortality and uh, and how uh, you know when you see it up close and when you touch it and taste it and uh, uh, for some people it may be a relief to uh, you know to take the big sleep. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You get hurt or you hurt and you want to go away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't necessarily want to go away, but you're not gonna fight it. You know, mm -hmm. if it comes like a warm, uh, warm blanket over you and uh, takes you wherever it is that your loved ones went, yeah. so it's, it's not such a terrible option. I don't think sometimes people's people's irrational fear of death is uh, misplaced. It's part of the uh, it's part of the cycle. I've seen it and touched it and tasted it, and I know it. Uh, wonderful fuel for a song for creativity for the fire. That is uh, your music. All right, you're going to hear it right here, right now on barbershoppodcast.com. <laughs> Yeah. 
show even though proud is a is a uh, sin right it's a, it's a it's a boastful thing but that's okay i can be proud to have some great music and some great stories Thank on the sir. show uh the recording of the cd as you said it was something that you were ready to do you uh, approached it with that kind of vim and vigor it got done it sounds the way you want it to yeah, I took it in, <clears throat> like I say, like uh, just like going uh, where the love is uh, with Rebels Rock or, or with Lou. Uh, the love is uh, with my friend uh, M.M. LeBlanc, you know, and I've known him from the beginning. I never would have, I don't think I would have written one song or played one show if I wouldn't have met M.M. Yeah. He was like a guy like me, but he was making magic and music and he, he, he uh, made me see that there doesn't necessarily have to be a, desire, a, a divide between regular guys and artists. Regular guys can be artists too, you know. Yeah. And, and he allowed me to uh, really entertain the idea that I could express myself, you know. So, you know, Paul's been on the journey with me and all the way. And so I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought of going anywhere else but with, uh, you know, those guys. He and gets just, to you and you know yeah, he, he was going to capture he knows, that. Uh, I just, I don't even... I just go there and play, and then I just leave, yeah. and they do everything else. They do the song order. They yeah. do the they do the everything. And all let, the cooking. And, and let's talk. Yeah, cooking. Let's talk about Rebels Rock 
And let's talk about, like, their kitchen. I mean, my goodness, like the chicken wings, the shank. We had the, the, the lamb shank. And I've had, oh, sorry, I got off topic there. But it's like when you go to the C and you're going to go to the CD release, yes. you can go a little bit early and you can get yourself some Din Dins. It's not a big place. It's cozy. It's wonderful. And I'm so happy that you're having it there of all places. It should be there. Yeah, me right? too. It's, it's like, absolutely fitting. That is great. All right. We're going to play... Uh, the last of the three that we're featuring off the CD, Don't Throw Me Away. Um, is it exactly what it sounds like? Yeah, it's a song that I uh, wrote uh, uh, a while back, and it's about, uh, it's kind of a redemptive thematically, you know, like people seem to be uh, easy to judge and easy to dispose of other humans that are complex creatures and do good and bad things. And I know I've done good and bad things, and yeah. bad and good things. So, you know, I, uh, I, that was uh, the theme that I was trying to, trying to, trying to hit there. And then I, I actually rearranged it. It was an electric, it was like a doomy electric tune. And then when I came in here last time, I'm pretty sure I played it on the banjo just for some reason, I'd never even done it on the banjo before, but I played it. Excellent. So, well, we're going to hear the, 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 the blowed up version. Yeah. Right here. Don't throw me away. Barbershoppodcast.com. Framus, tonight's guest on Barbershop Podcast. It's been another fantastic show leading up to the end of the month, the end of November, not this month, next month, uh, four year anniversary show. And of course, you're invited, as is anyone who's been a guest on Barbershop Podcast in the four years. And we're talking 600 plus musicians wow. floating around out there. there you go. They are uh, uh, going to buy a lot of kielbasa, a lot of beer. And cheese. <laughs> Can't go wrong. A lot of good fun at Barbershop Podcast uh, each and every week. Uh, Going to squeeze one more live original tune. Get you to play the twang box. Uh, what's this one you're going to do for us? This is uh, this is called Seen My Ghost. Seen My Ghost. Yes. Um, not even going to ask you about it. Just going to ask you to play it. Okay. Right here, right now on BarbershopPodcast.com. Is there anybody out there see my ghost? You see my ghost, would you let 
let me know Anybody out there seen my ghost I look high and low, I look high and low Anybody out there seen my soul If you see my soul, could you let me know song every night barbershop podcast bringing you the very best in world class music the best music you've never heard change that change it send it out to your friends send it out to your family send it out to everyone you care about say you got to get some of this get some live get some original music thanks so much for coming in thanks and for joining me. us tonight it was a real pleasure for Ryan Cannon and Gary Greenland I want to wish you a wonderful night hope you enjoyed the show like follow subscribe help us out help us help you out and don't forget our GoFundMe campaign we're going to get some cameras so oh, this is even more beautiful give us can, your money if you can believe it thanks for coming out barbershoppodcast.com <laughs>